tuned to WVOF 88.5 FM, the voice of Fairfield. Joe Kelly here with the Up Room till 8 this evening. And uh, as mentioned in the opening today, we have a multi-instrumentalist Grammy award-winning musician. Uh, he's a bassist with uh, Weird Al Yankovic, but uh, he's got an amazing solo career, prolific. In fact, this year he released two full CDs, uh, one entitled El Natural 7 and uh, Spontaneous Symmetry. His name is Stephen J, and uh, we welcome once again to our show. Thank you, Stephen. How you doing? Doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm doing well, and, um, you know, we were talking about all the touring with uh, Weird Al Yankovic that, that you have done over the years, and how, how do you uh, get all the time to, to put two albums together? Well, uh, these albums were a few years in the making, so I had a lot of time there, and um, they just happened to get done sort of at the same time, so I, even though it didn't make a whole lot of sense, decided to let them go out at the same time. So when, when you're on the road, do you, do you get a chance to to do some uh, production work and, you know, the rough drafts of what you're uh, working on for your own stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of time. We don't have too many responsibilities other than doing the show every night, so there's plenty of time in hotel rooms and, and a bus, you know, to work on music, and it's really you know, a cool part of the process to be able to do that, to be able to perform and compose and four fly here on the road. Um, let's talk about the, the two different CDs and, um, you know, how you split it up with the instrumental CD and, and primary vocals and, and music. Uh, talk about that. Okay, yeah, they're two entirely different works. The, the instrumental CD, Spontaneous Symmetry, is just, uh, it's just uh, all kinds of really uh, experimental forms of funk I've been messing around with lately. And some pieces that came from uh, film score work that were done that I adapted and turned them into, you know, full-on pieces of music. So that's a, just an all-out funk album. Mm -hmm. And El, Nat El Natural 7 is the latest in my, you know, solo CD series with vocals and all the bells and whistles on there. Uh, once again, you know, entirely different, except for one song, a song that my son, wrote, Miles J., wrote called right. Ami. Uh, I included an instrumental version of that on Spontaneous Symmetry and also a version of it on El Natural 7 that I wrote lyrics and added vocals to. So that kind of bridges the gap, that one. Yeah, our special guest right now, Stephen J. and uh, StephenJ.com, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-J-A-Y.com. You can go there and find out uh, just all the accomplishments of this great musician and and uh, order these two CDs. I mean, it's uh, available. It's available on most uh, internet portals, right? People can go there peer to peer and get them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on iTunes and all that. Right. And so, on my website. That's right, StephenJ.com. And and you, we talked about the the funk. You you talked about the spontaneous symmetry. We're going to play a track right now from this. Uh, it's called "The End of Two. Now, okay. that, that's a title. You got to explain that one. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you're counting beats in a measure. Mm -hmm. You know, one and two and three and four and the the end of two is, is well, it's a pretty darn historic place in the measure. You know, okay. You know, it's like if, if you're feeling like one, two, three, four, one, two, and bum, ah. So it's a, is having such a uh, important location in our time frame of music. We decided to name a song after it. Mm -hmm. All right. Love this track. This is uh, from Stephen J's Spontaneous Symmetry. We'll come back and speak again with Stephen J. Great track from Spontaneous Symmetry. This is Stephen J. The End of Two. And uh, you you told me that uh, you do a lot of music with PBS National, including that song, right? Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, a track that went with uh, PBS special or editor uh, PBS uh, part of a series. On skateboarding, it was called um, the Eddie Files, mm -hmm. and it, it it looked at all the incredible athletes in that sport and had a lot of great shots, really incredible tricks, and feats of magicians they were able to perform. So I was uh, really inspired to do something musically that you know that could measure up to to what they were up to. But yeah, I've done a lot of a lot of PBS shows, lots of different subjects, 
uh, mostly science and uh, education. But it's it's been a great chance to stretch out as a composer. So, do you write music? Be, you know, the the program's all set, and you you get a clip, and and you write the song to that. Uh, well, that's the best of all worlds. It's kind of all of the above. Sometimes I'll get in, like in some of the specials we did, they were so uh, in depth that I'd get into the process early when they were still, you know, writing scripts, mm -hmm. so that I could be cooking up ideas and everything. Um, and so it'd be like a long process of, of working with the writers and the editors all the way, you know, for production and such production. But at other times, uh, we were working on series Futures with Jaime Escalante, and we were doing a lot of shows really fast. So I didn't have a chance to be there at the formative stages and I could get to it, you know, at the editing stages. Right. And usually uh, with film composers, you know, especially with TV, uh, you're, the people like to keep on editing right up to the last minute before the release. Mm -hmm. And so what you mentioned about hitting a finished product and then scoring it, that doesn't happen too often, you know, for you to get a, a final cut to, right. to edit to. Usually, usually you're working and doing changes with the editors right up until the last minute because like all creative artists, the editors can't stop their ideas and they, even though production is over with, they get a great idea to add something or subtract or extend something and they, they, uh, would be wrong to resist it, even though it may make the music that you just finished composing obsolete. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but that's the way it goes in the business. So uh, you've you've got this year, practically a year off from you know big big tour in support of a really popular album uh, with Weird Al Yankovic. Um, what what are some of the plans for uh, this upcoming year, twenty seventeen? Well. Uh, yeah, it was a great tour. Two hundred, two hundred dates over two years. All those countries, I think, twenty-two countries. Mm -hmm. anyway, it was really great. Uh, yeah. So for the next, next, uh, the next tour, which is planned for two thousand eighteen, without, is going to be different in very many ways. Uh, there's going to be a lot more originals and a whole lot less uh, costume changes and videos. It's going to be more of a get up on stage and play kind of show. So I know this year we're going to be working on that. Uh, getting that all organized and ready to go. Right. And for myself, I'm working on some things. Uh, my son, Miles J., and his mm -hmm. brother, Ian, are both uh, composers and film composers, and they bring a lot of projects here to our, our ranch. Mm -hmm. And so I'm working a lot with them, which is a really great joy because they're wonderful guys to work with. And they have a beautiful place up in the mountains above L.A. where we have our studios and we have livestock and plenty of inspiration is up in the Los Padres National Forest. So yeah, I finally worked yeah. a lot with them. Do you have horses up there? No, we have llamas. Oh, llamas. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah they're, they're great pack animals and just mm -hmm. cool friends to have. And then I plan on doing more shows with uh, my buddy Pete Gallagher, my longtime drummer from right. the band Akinzui. Mm -hmm. We're going to be getting out and doing doing shows and, uh, and that should pretty much be it. So uh, you mentioned Pete Gallagher, so I, I think it's a uh, perfect timing to play a song from El Natural 7, which uh, you and Pete do some magic on. It's the last cut off the record called Cold in the Sun. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how, how'd you guys go composing and how far back did this go? Okay, well, Pete and I have been working together since, uh, God, since the late 60s, actually, mm -hmm. in more bands than I can count, you know. Right. And, it's just one of those situations where his groove is inevitable. I mean, I don't know how to describe the shape of it, but you just can't help but fall in. So that's why I've always just looked toward with Pete. And he's also a great vocalist, so he, he contributes a lot of harmonies to things. So um, as far as that particular song, I don't really recall the, the origin of it. It was probably just a bunch of ideas we were working on and grabbed some pieces and decided to go with Right. So this is uh, Akinzui, the, the bass and rhythm section, uh, drums and, and bass, but they play all sorts of instruments on this. Uh, Stephen J, El Natural 7, Cold in the Sun. Please go to stephenj.com, and uh, this is Stephen J. Great track from Spontaneous Symmetry. This is Stephen J, The End of Two. And uh, you, you told me that uh, you do a lot of music with PBS National, including that song, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a, uh, 
a track that went with uh, PBS special or editor uh, PBS uh, part of a series on uh, skateboarding. It was called um, the Eddie Files, mm-hmm. and it, it it looked at all the incredible athletes in that sport and had a lot of great shots, really incredible tricks, and feats as much as they were able to perform. So I was uh, really inspired to do something musically that you know that could measure up to to what they were up to. But yeah, so a lot of a lot of PBS shows, lots of different subjects, um, uh, mostly science and uh, education. But it's it's been a great chance to stretch out as a composer. So, do you write music? Be, you know, the the program's all set, and you you get a clip, and and you write the song to that. Uh, well, that's the best of all worlds. It's kind of all of the above. Sometimes I'll get in, like on some of the specials we did. They were so. Uh, in depth that I'd get into the process early when they were still, you know, writing scripts mm-hmm. so that I could be cooking up ideas and everything. Um, and so it would be like a long process of, of working with the writers and the editors all the way, you know, for production and such production. But at other times, uh, we were working on series Futures with Jaime Escalante, and we were doing a lot of shows really fast, so I didn't have a chance to be there at the formative stages and I could get to it, you know, at the editing stages. Right. And usually uh, with film composers, you know, especially with TV, uh, you're, the people like to keep on editing right up to the last minute before the release. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what you mentioned about hitting a finished product and then scoring it, that doesn't happen too often you know, for you to get a, a final cut to, right. to edit to. Usually, usually you're working and doing changes with the editors right up until the last minute because like all creative artists, the editors can't stop their ideas and they... Even though production is over with, they get a great idea to add something or subtract or extend something, and they they uh, would be wrong to resist it, even though it may make the music that you just finished composing obsolete. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but that's the way it goes in the business. So uh, you've you've got this year, practically a year off from you know big big tour in support of a really popular album uh, with Weird Al Yankovic. Um, what what are some of the plans? I'm, for uh, this upcoming year, 2017? Well, uh, yeah, it was a great tour. 200, 200 dates over two years, all those countries, I think 22 countries. Mm-hmm. It was really great. Uh, yeah, so for the next next uh, the next the tour, which is planned for 2018 with Al, is going to be different in very many ways. Uh, there's going to be a lot more originals and a whole lot less uh, costume changes and videos. It's going to be more of a get up on stage and play kind of show. So I know this year we're going to be working on that, uh, getting that all organized and ready to go. Right. And for myself, I'm working on some things. Uh, my son, Miles J., and his mm-hmm. brother, Ian, are both uh, composers and film composers, and they bring a lot of projects here to our, our ranch. Mm-hmm. And so I'm working a lot with them, which is a really great joy because they're wonderful guys to work with them. We have a beautiful place up in the mountains above L.A. where we have our studios and we have livestock and plenty of inspiration. It's up in the Los Padres National Forest. So yeah, I finally worked yeah. a lot with them. Do you have horses up there? No, we have llamas. Oh, llamas. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah they're, they're great pack animals and just mm-hmm. cool friends to have. And then I plan on doing more shows with uh, my buddy Pete Gallagher, my longtime drummer from right. the band Akinzui. Mm-hmm. We're going to be getting out and doing doing shows, and uh, and that should pretty much be it. So uh, you mentioned Pete Gallagher, so I, I think it's a uh, perfect time to play a song from El Natural Seven, which uh, you and Pete do some magic on. It's the last cut off the record called "Cold in the Sun," and. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, how, how'd you guys go composing and how far back did this go? Okay, well, Pete and I have been working together since, uh, God, since the late 60s, actually, mm-hmm. in more bands than I can count, you know. Right. It's, just, it's just one of those situations where his groove is inevitable. I mean, I don't know how to describe the shape of it, but you just can't help but fall in. So that's why I've always just looked toward with Pete. And he's also a great vocalist, so he, he contributes a lot of harmonies to things. So, um, as far as that particular song, I don't really recall the, the origin of it. It was probably just a bunch of ideas we were working on and grabbed some pieces and decided to go with. Right. So, actually, this is uh, 
Akinzui, the, the bass and rhythm section, uh, drums and, and bass, but they play all sorts of instruments on this. Uh, Stephen J, El Natural 7, Cold in the Sun. Please go to stephenj.com. Go like this. That is a collaboration with our special guest, and we're honored to have him on again, Stephen J, with uh, his buddy, Mr. Wayne Shorter, on that particular track. Wow, some some heavyweights, yourself and Wayne Shorter, collaborating. How did, how did that collaboration start? Well, uh, Wayne was recording uh, an album at uh, Producers Workshop in Hollywood, and uh, the owner of that studio, Joe Vitarelli, who's also a producer and very famous film composer, I worked with him, and he called me up to come and add some talking drum to some of Wayne's tracks. And uh, in exchange, Wayne agreed to play on a couple of my tracks, so it was very opportune. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, the double CD release, El Natural 7 and... Spontaneous Symmetry, StephenJ.com. Uh, you know, we, we mentioned the success of uh, Weird Al Yankovic's latest CD, and uh, it, it's quite an achievement these days. Number one release and, and uh, hugely successful tour. Um, you guys still get a, a great charge from, from having those things happen to you? Oh, absolutely. It's a super great charge. Uh-huh. You know, sta- standing up in front of any, any appreciative audience is, of course, a really a, a great charge. But Al's audience is unique in that people come there just to have fun. You know, it's it's just all about having fun. And so, so they pay their hard-earned congealed energy to buy a ticket. You know, they're, they're determined to have a good time. And, and we kind of give them the, the circus they need to do that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when you're on stage with, with Al in front of you know, huge audiences, especially at these festivals and things in the large outdoor venues. It's really, you're looking out on this force of nature. Everybody is feeling so good and joyful and happy. And they beam this energy up at you. It's, uh, it's just absolutely thrilling and exciting just seeing everybody out there appreciating it. So much. It's a real blessing. Do you, do you have any particular songs that, uh, out of the repertoire that he's, he's uh, done these years that, that are your favorites? I sure do. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, well, in this on this last tour, we did an unplugged segment where everybody goes acoustic and we sit around the little semicircle like the MTV unplugged thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And that and that's right in the middle of this show. That's the action packed and full of big, huge rock and roll textures and all sorts of orchestral things. And it all of a sudden, just comes down to this quiet moment where we do four songs in a medley acoustically, and that is a real blast to do. It it feels so good to bring the audience to that point and, uh, and it's really fun to be such a good acoustic instrument so that's always fun and then I always enjoyed playing our Chili Pepper parody you know the Bedrock Anthem the oh, parody yeah. of Give It Away right because right. it's just so it's just so much fun rocking out on that flea bass part right. you know, it's a it's ball and also on this tour the song that we did is a parody of Blurred Lines mm-hmm. called Word Crimes oh okay that oh one, yeah right that one yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one is really fun to play. There's a, a strange thing going on in the bass part. Uh, the the bass guitar and the left hand of the piano uh, play the bass part trading notes in that song. I don't know if you've ever noticed. But it, it sounds like a part that's going bump, ba dum, bump, ba dum, bump, ba dum. But actually, every one of those notes is alternating between the bass and the piano. And so either one of the piano player or the bass player, when we play our parts, they feel well syncopated because you might just be hitting you know an upbeat here and there where it sounds like you're hitting a downbeat Mm -hmm. but the effect of playing that live is just uh really really liberating it's it's just so funny so that's why i I love that one to play live yeah well people will get a a chance to see that that big entourage once again in 2018 uh you guys are working on you're working on your own projects and Hey, thanks, Stephen, for coming on the show again and, and a double CD blast, uh, El Natural 7 and Spontaneous Symmetry. So thanks again. All right. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, and, and you got to get your uh, son's music over to us, Axon Orchestra. Hey, right? I, yeah. Yeah, I will send that over right away. Yeah, yeah. Love love to, to play, uh, you know, Miles J's music as well, so... Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll send. I haven't sent you some CDs. You're going to love it. All right, we're going to uh, go out with uh, one final track from El Natural Seven. This one is called "Some of This Stuff," 
And StephenJ.com is where you go. Thanks again, Stephen. All right. Thank you, Joe.